First of all, welcome. This is the first of four lectures. My name is Steve Locke. I'm Assistant Professor of Art Education here at the Massachusetts College of Art. Um, the lovely and talented uh, Nancy asked me to give these lectures to you. I'm really excited. I don't get to see the freshmen as much as I used to. The first year students, sorry, not the freshmen. That's sexist. Um, so I don't get to see the first year students as much as I used to, and uh, this is really exciting for me. Um, how many of you like art? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is a better question, right? How many of you like to talk about art? Okay. How many of you could explain why a work of art is good? How many think it's all crap? Right? The critics are just like, well, you know, this painting has a certain kind of otherness and it moves me deeply, like that sort of stuff. That sort of art speak, you know? How many, are, you've all heard this stuff, right? Right? How many of you actually talk that way about art? Really? No. Okay. What we're going to try to do here, pictures are always beyond words. You know, when somebody asks me what a work of art means, I usually say to them, well, look at it. Like, why do you need a description of, why, of what it looks like? Can't you look at it and understand what it is about? And you know what? A lot of people can't. A lot of people are just completely lost in that regard. But as artists, as visual people, if you don't know how to talk about your own work, if you don't know the relationship your work has to the work of the past, you're at the mercy of everybody's opinion about your work. And so that's really what visual language is about. It's about developing this language that we call art in a visual sense. Now, a language is really just something that, um, it's a way of communication, right? Like, hu only humans have language, right? Dolphins have language? <laughs> what was the last great dolphin book you read? <laughs> no, really, dolphins don't have language. Dolphins, dolphins, have a, dolphins have a way of communicating, but they don't have language, right? There's a difference between hitting somebody, feels good, feels bad, pleasure, pain. That's based on instinct. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, all those things are based on instinct. Language has a certain amount of subtlety. It's like the difference between saying, please listen, and listen to me. Dolphins can't do that, but humans can. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of humans, don't get me wrong. I, don't, I, I would much rather probably prefer to spend time with dolphins, to be honest with you. But um, we do have language. And if we talk about language in terms of what it is visually, meaning pertaining to sight, and language, the method of human communication, either spoken or written, consisting of the use of words in a structured and conventional way. Why does it have to be structured and conventional? Because everybody has to share it. Go ahead. That might be possible, but when we get, I just want them up, because I want to see your beautiful faces, that's all. Yeah. No, so um, any nonverbal method of uh, expression or communication, which would be art? Art's not verbal, because pictures are always beyond words. How am I doing, Dave? Am I you getting some feedback there? Thank you. Okay, so what we're most interested in is this part here, the system of communication used by a particular community. We're a particular community of artists, right? So there are things that we have in common as artists that we need to share, and it's the way that we communicate our, about our work. So this is really the, the charge of this class, or what the mission of this class is, okay? You guys can read that. But the most important thing is without a cogent understanding of the visual word, world, its conventions, and its elements, one will be handicapped in the attempt to make any sort of art. Go ahead. If you like. Whoa, 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 what? Fast for what? To write everything down? You know what? There's an expression about the spirit and the letter. Think about the spirit of what I say and not the letter of what I say. Think about the spirit of it and not the letter, okay? There's not going to be a test, you know? Oh, the, what's visual language? And you have to fill it out. You know, what, you know what tests do? Tests measure your ability to take tests. They don't measure the fact you know anything. Okay. But. Thank you. Okay. So we're trying to get rid of the handicaps. So, what do you see? 
Words. Who said words? What kind of words? They're English, right? Where's English come from? Germany? Right. It's a Germanic language. Very good. What else do you see? Grammar? What's grammar? Speak up. They can't hear you over here. Right. It's in a particular order, right? What's the order that we have here? Go ahead, Mr. R. Zoo York. What symbols? These are symbols? Each, this W? That tells you to make the wah, wah sound, right? It's a, phonetic, it's a phonetic representation. It's a graphic representation of a phonetic experience. So when you see this, this thing here, you make the wah sound, right? OK? We're all hooked on phonics, right? OK? So what do you see? It's words on a screen, right? What kind of words? English words. T who said Times Roman? Wrong font. Close, but it's the wrong font. Nope. Any designers in here? What font is this? It's a sans serif font. What does that mean? There's no thingies. That's an art historical term there, thingy, you know? I want to talk about my thingy in my art class. I'll get arrested, right? No. There are no hooks. There are no hooks on the letters. The letters are smooth. It's a sans serif font. What kind of, is it a statement? What is this? It's a question. How do we know it's a question? Because the question mark and why else? That's called an interrogatory, right? When you make language visible, you can understand the structure of it. Okay. So as we're looking at language and how it's put together, what font is this? Times Roman, right? Okay. The font above is Gil Sans. Which one is more serious? The Times, why is it the more serious font? Because it's the newspaper font, right? Who said standard? What's it standard from? High school? <laughs> it's called Times Roman, right? Times? What's Times? Nope. Another place, another city. London. That's where the Times is from. There's the New York Times and the Times. This is the font from the London Times newspaper. And it's Roman because you see these little things here called serifs? Back when all letters were carved, you had to stick the chisel into the stone and hit it to make a line so you could make this line. The sans serif font is on the top. That has more to do with writing and printing. This has to do with carving. Okay? That's why they look different. They're both questions, right? Which question would you answer first, the, the sans serif font or the serif font? Which one seems more important? Thank you. Why is the one on top more important? It's bolder, right? It's more aggressive, right? What? Do you see? Fool? You can see the fool in there, right? It's sort of implied, right? You know? Just changing, putting the punctuation in different part, parts changes the emphasis of the statement. These are the rules of language, right? Whatever you put next to a word, you put this exclamation point here, that means what? You know? The question mark is the same, you know? You have to move your neck when you say this one. Do you see? I don't think you do. You know, you have to move your neck a little bit with that one. You know, these are all cues that come directly from the visual experience of language. You know, and this, these um, written or these printed cues talk about what we do with our voices, with our bodies, and, and with ourselves. And um, to understand these things, these cues tell us that someone is speaking this statement. It's no longer a passive statement. We're reading something. You recognize these? This one? UPS?
Everyone knows this one. Yeah, right. I figured as much. What about the one on top, the black one? What about the panda? No one knows the panda? Which one is the panda? Thank you very much. Okay. You guys come across these every day. They're part of your visual world, right? If you have a package to mail and you're walking down the street and you see the UPS sign, you know that you'll be able to mail your package there. What's this one? No. Right. Expensive? 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 Yeah. What's this one? Expensive? Right? 